President-elect Donald Trump's picks for his cabinet include some historic firsts. Senator Marco Rubio would be the first person of Hispanic origin to hold the role of Secretary of State. Trump's campaign manager, Susie Wiles, would be the first female White House chief of staff. And hedge fund executive Scott Besant would be the first openly gay Republican cabinet member as Treasury Secretary. But Trump's cabinet would still be less diverse compared to when President Joe Biden first took office. What we're seeing, unfortunately, is with the second administration of the Trump administration, a regression. Mark Hannis is co-founder of Inclusive America, a nonprofit that tracks diversity in government. He says that while Trump's picks are more diverse compared to his first administration, the numbers still don't reflect the full U.S. population. The, the bottom line is that the second administration of Trump's uh, presidency is breaking many glass ceilings. However, it's going backwards in the overall picture of looking more like our people. Trump has chosen eight women so far for his cabinet, double the number from his first presidency. But it's still less than Biden's first cabinet, which included 11 women and then rose to 13, a historic high for women serving concurrently. Proud to stand here with you today, President Trump. Trump has so far picked four people of color for his cabinet, including Tulsi Gabbard, who would be the first director of national intelligence from the Pacific Islander community. But Hannah says that number is not representative of the U.S. population. When it comes to uh, race and ethnicity, he had approximately four people of color, uh, or 16.7 percent, um, in the first term. And in this uh, time, he's got that same number, four people, uh, so hovering between that 15 and 16 percent. And people of color in America make up close to 40 percent. So no progress at all. Uh, when it comes to race and ethnicity. Biden's cabinet included 13 people of color, Barack Obama's included 10, and George W. Bush's had six. When it comes to age, there's quite a range. Trump, who will be the oldest president to take office, has chosen millennial and Gen Z women for top roles. If confirmed, 27-year-old Caroline Levitt would be the youngest White House press secretary ever. And 40-year-old Congresswoman Elise Stefanik would be the youngest U.S. ambassador to the United Nations.